you're done with your boil, and now you need to transfer that wort to your fermenter, and of course, we're gonna chill it. But what's happening now, as, as a brewer, you've done everything you can up to the boil. Now it's up to you hiring some fantastic little yeasties to go in here, and they have to work their butt off to turn it into beer. Well, one of the things that really helps them is they need to have some aeration. They need oxygen to help build better cells, cell walls, and help them reproduce better. So we need to introduce into our wort some kind of oxygen, whether it's through the air or a pure oxygen source from a bottle. But that's gonna be important. Well, let me tell you, what I used to do is I would get my wort transferred into my fermenter, and then I would take a tube with a diffusion stone, stick it down through the hole, and move it around a bit and hope to get it aerated really well. Well, I've got to give credit where credit is due. There's a gentleman on one of the great forums out there, Lane Rossi, thank you for the inspiration of coming up with an idea on how to get oxygen into my wart much more efficiently. And here it is. It's a simple copper tubing system. My oxygen comes up through here. I have got my diffusion stone inside. My wort comes from my chiller through here, out this tube, and into the fermenter. Now all I have to do is turn on my pump and let my fermenter fill up, and it's already oxygenated, and I'm ready to pitch my wort. So this is what we're going to talk about, is how to make one of these today. So lined out here are the components that I'm going to use for my wort aerator. I have simply a copper half-inch T using Class M copper pipe with just a couple little pieces. I've got a male and female copper pipe connections, a copper cap that I'm going to drill a hole in the end so I can insert the tube that's going to have the actual bubble unit. And then finally, I just have a brass 3 8 nipple here, threaded, but it's going to be soldered into the copper. And here I have the same thing, basically, but it's a quick disconnect system where I can remove the hose from this end and allow this to slide in and I will solder that. I had to file the threads of this one since they were a little bit larger. One thing I'm going to do is the usage of the coupling here allows me to take my end piece out and be able to clean it or fix it or whatever I need to do and be able to clean the unit even better. I thought that was important. So that's my setup and now I'm going to start soldering it together. One thing to keep in mind when you are soldering is if you have a really heavy part compared to a lightweight part, that heavy part needs to be heated well ahead of time. This threaded piece, of course, is quite heavy. So actually, I'm just applying heat strictly to it, getting it good and warm and ready to accept the solder. You can see how the flux is already bubbling. There we go. Now we're flowing some solder into the joint. Now I want the cap to be good and warm. And it'll literally just draw the solder right up into it. I've got it on a wire screen, a stainless steel wire screen, so I can get more heat underneath if I need to. May not need to. Yeah, it's flowing really nice. One of the reasons I use the silver solder on the brass parts is then I can come back and do other soldering and never have to worry about it coming unloose because it melts at a much higher point than normal solder. In fact, uh, I had to get the brass parts basically uh, glowing.
So I had the two pieces finally finished. I'm going to put them in some PBW to get them good and cleaned and do any last final cleanup and making them look a little prettier. And then I will put in the final piece, which will be siliconed into the top unit. And here's a shot of our finished piece. You can see this will be the removable part that comes from the chiller. And then when I want to clean it, I can simply take this part apart, and there's my beer stone. So now I'm able to aerate my beer as it goes from my chiller to my fermenter. One additional piece I have added to the oxygenator is this simple strip, a thermometer. This will let me know exactly what the temperature of my wort going into the fermenter is as it comes out of the chiller. Just another simple little thing. So there you have it. My do-it-yourself oxygenator. Basically for just a few bucks in copper parts and a good diffusion stone. You can put either air or oxygen through the system and you're going to find you're going to have a better oxygenated wort and therefore your yeast is going to work a whole lot better for you.